Hi, my name is Radhan Sebastian. Uh, I work at X.AI where we make an AI personal assistant uh, to schedule meetings for you. Thank you all for being here and uh, let's uh, learn a little bit about uh, recursion schemes. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is how we use recursion in our programs, uh, why we shouldn't, and what we can use instead. Uh, so the broad overview of the talk is going to be uh, I'm going to make an argument against using recursion directly to traverse a data structure and introduce recursion schemes as an alternative. I'm going to define these recursion schemes independent of a specific data structure, and finally end with an overview of uh, recursion schemes like Kata, Anna, Apple Parallel, all of that, um, and show how they are useful and how they relate to each other. Cool, let's start with explicit recursion. Uh, broadly, I define explicit recursion as using, defining something in terms of itself, right? So let's look at some examples. The good old sum method. You're going to see a lot of this in this, in this talk, uh, so get used to it. Uh, I, what it broadly looks like is you first pattern match on the list. Uh, in the case of nil, you turn a zero. In the case of the cons, you add the head onto the sum of the tail, right? And that place where we're calling sum in the definition of sum is where we're using direct recursion. This is what we want to get away from. Um, another example of direct recursion is this, right? Just the definition of the list data type. Uh, by the way, uh, in the course of this talk, I'm going to omit the type parameter of list. Just assume that all lists, all data structures are just data structures of int. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that axis uh, of data structures, that, that parameter sum of data structures is not going to be relevant to what we're going to be talking about here. Anyway, the definition of the uh, cons uh, constructor uh, for this linked list is recursive. It refers to the structure that it's defining, right? So this is explicit recursion. We'll come back to this later, but for now, let's just stick to recursion uh, in function definitions. Okay, so that's what explicit recursion is. Why is it bad? Um, an argument, uh, the, the argument against uh, explicit recursion is uh, a convincing version of this for me was by way of analogy to go to, right? It's also a popular argument. It's been brought up a few times. I think first in the bananas, lenses, envelopes, and barbed wire paper, which is kind of the canonical paper on this stuff. Uh, the argument goes, uh, the common, a common use of go to's is to implement loops, uh, to do something repeatedly until a condition is met. Uh, so introducing this new, less powerful while construct, the, the, the loop, um, allowed you to do what you were able to do in the go-tos in a more structured and safe way. And structure and safety is kind of the benefit of any kind of good abstraction, right? Structure in that it's easier to tell that the loop implementation of this program uh, is a loop. Uh, we have a mental model of the program. We're just looking for the parameters uh, that we need to like, plug into this mental model to see what the program does, right? Um, it's, uh, so with a more powerful tool like a go-to, you're, you're starting from scratch. You're building up the mental model and then you know, like figuring out like what, what the parameters are that you can tweak to change the behavior of it. Um, the safety that it provides, uh, it doesn't stop you from writing uh, infinite loops, uh, but it prevents you like, from getting the label top of the loop wrong. Right? Uh, which it has, so basically, you, you get fewer knobs when you're using a loop, which means fewer mistakes. Uh, so recursion schemes are to explicit recursion what loops are to go-tos, abstractions that allow us to traverse data structures in a more structured and safe way. Uh, they're kind of like machines that, given some parameters, will give you a program that traverses your data structure in a certain way. So the kinds of, data the kinds of recursion schemes we're going to be talking about today uh, broadly fall into categories of uh, schemes that uh, consume data structures and the ones that generate them. Uh, so these are patterns uh, in which, so we use recursion in these patterns by which consume data structures and generate them. Um, the, the, the Kata and Para are examples of uh, recursion schemes that uh, consume a data structure, uh, Anna and Apo uh, generate them, uh, and Hilo is kind of a mix of both. So let's start uh, with catamorphism. Uh, uh, it's called uh, catamorphism, kata meaning downward in Greek. Uh, it's more commonly known as a fold, uh, like uh, hands up uh, if, if you're familiar with the uh, fold right or fold left constructs and lists in Scala. Fair amount of you, right, sure. Uh, so this is one of the more common uh, recursion schemes, so uh, we're not gonna be uh, spending, so we're starting with this so that we get an idea of like the advantages of using fold over direct recursion. Um, so what, what it does is it folds a data structure down into a single value, kind of abstractly, for any data structure. Uh, so let's start with our um, definition of the uh, sum function again. Uh, we pattern match, return zero, add the head onto the sum of the tail, right? So we don't want to get away from calling sum in the definition of sum. Uh, we do this in a few other places, right? Length looks exactly the same. Just instead of head plus sum of tail, we have one plus length of tail. Uh, counts 
you know, you want to count all the element, number of times an element occurs in a list, looks similar. Um, you might want to do two of these things at once, right? You want to co compute the sum of a list as well as its length uh, at the same time in a single traversal, and then you end up with something like this. You can see there's some sort of duplication going on between here and the definitions of sum and len, and uh, we'll get back to how we might be able to reduce that. And that's where the recursion is. Um, so you said you're familiar with the, uh, with, with the abstraction we're looking for here, which is fold, right? Uh, so you want a function that takes a list and reduces it down to a single value, any value B. Uh, and to do this, you need two things. You need a value to return if the list is empty, and you need an accumulate function that takes uh, the value you're visiting in the list and the value accumulated so far and returns the newly accumulated value. Um, let's define, let's implement this uh, again by kind of generalizing sum. Um, we are assuming that if empty and accumulate exist in this context, so sum becomes fold. Instead of returning a zero, I return an if empty. Uh, and instead of, su instead of summing the head to the sum of the tail, I accumulate the head with uh, the fold of the tail. And so I've kind of uh, pulled out the stuff that's specific to sum using this definition of fold. Uh, and now I can implement sum, len, and counts all in terms of fold. So great. We have isolated explicit recursion from lists, right? Um, what about other data structures? Let's take this tree, for example. It's a binary tree. Uh, it has a branch, which has a left and a right tree, and a leaf, which contains a value of type int. Um, what does sum for a tree look like? We pattern match on the tree. Uh, we get a um, leaf and a branch. In the leaf case, we just return the value in the leaf. In the branch case, we just sum the subtrees. Um, Cool. Let's do the same thing uh, that we did for list and isolate the recursion from this uh, function into a fold method. Uh, so sum becomes fold. Instead of returning an A, I need some function that can take any item in the list and return a B, right? So in, in the case of sum, it was just A because I just went from int to int. But if it's any other type, I would need uh, some sort of if leave function that took the item in the list and returned a B. Um, the same thing with, uh, instead of plus, I have a generic accumulate function that just accumulates any two Bs into a, into a, a new B. So given the functions if, leaf, and accumulate here, I can define a way to collapse a tree. So let's compare that to the, for, to the inputs of the fold function for uh, list. Uh, so in list, we had if empty and accumulate that look like this. And for tree, we have if, leaf, and accumulate that look like this. There's not a lot of similarity here, right? So if you put them next to each other, uh, they all return Bs, we can see that. So in our quest to like find a, uh, a description of fold that uh, is independent of a data structure, it seems like we're stuck here where we, we can't get a, a, a unified representation of the inputs to the fold function. Um, so how we get ourselves out of this uh, is by recognizing that the constructors for the respective data structures look a lot like the inputs to these functions. Right? So nil takes nothing and returns a list. If empty takes nothing and returns a B. Cons takes a head, uh, an int and a list and returns a list. Accumulate takes an int and a B and returns a B. Leaf takes uh, an int and returns a tree. Uh, if leaf takes an int and returns a B. Branch takes two trees and returns a tree. Accumulate takes two Bs and returns a B. Right? So we're going to be using this. Uh, just briefly, I'm going to introduce this uh, helper method that given two functions of, uh, of type A to C and B to C, returns a single function of type either A or B to C. Uh, just convince yourself that these are equivalent. So given two functions, I can kind of collapse them into a single one. Um, and I'm going to do this with the functions which are the input for the uh, fold function for list. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm just rewriting if empty from type B to type nothing to B. And, and then I can represent both of these functions as a single one uh, of either nothing or int and b to b. Cool. Uh, I, I can do the same thing for, uh, for tree, and I end up with a structure like this. Um, the next step is to kind of rewrite that either type, right? Recall that the either type is implemented as uh, two case classes, a left and a right, uh, for any a and a b. Right? If we implemented a more specific version of this either type for either nothing or int and b, it might look something like this. Right? So I'll rename either to list f of b, uh, and left becomes nil f, it takes nothing. 
and uh, right becomes consf, which takes, instead of a tuple, the values int and b. So now I, list f is equivalent to either nothing or int and b. So I can rewrite f, the function f, as list f to b. I can do the same thing for trees. Uh, I introduce a structure called tree f, which is kind of analogous to the either uh, type. And uh, I, I can rewrite uh, the inputs to the full function for tree as tree f to b. Cool. Now we're getting closer to a generic full function. So for any f, f in this case being something like list f or tree f, I can represent the inputs to the full function as f of b to b. What about the outputs? We need some way to relate the, uh, the, this f structure, this list f or, uh, or, or tree f, to the recursive data structure list or tree. Um, so let's just try using the constructors that we already, the, the nil f and concept constructors that we already have, um, like we would nil and cons for a list, right? This is what a cons list would look like. Um, the problem is the type of this list is this, right? And it's a type that changes every time you add a new element to the list, which is not terribly useful if you want a homogeneous list. Um, so to get around this, we have to introduce this new construct called fix. Uh, it's a case class that takes an f of fix of f, but another way of thinking about this is that it's a function that takes an f of fix of f and returns a fix of f. So it's removed one layer of f, right? That's one way of thinking about it. Uh, that seems useful for what the problem we have now, which is to kind of collapse this, uh, this, this stack of list f's. So the type again, so let's just add fix to every node of this list. Uh, the type of this would look like fix of list f or fix of list f, right? Uh, so the first step here is I, I replace the nothing since uh, I'm downcasting nothing to uh, a list f, uh, a fix of list f, right? And now you can see that the, the function fix that takes a list f of fix of list f and returns a fix of list f can be applied here to kind of reduce this data type into just that. And we can apply this repeatedly until we get to this. Right? So now we have a recursive data structure that's represented by this fixed type, fix of list f. And that's the last part of, uh, well, the penultimate part of representing fold, right? Uh, we take an input, which is of type f of b to b, and we return a function from fix f to b. Fix f here representing the recursive data structure that we are collapsing in this fold. Okay, so let's implement fold for a specific um, data structure like list uh, in, in terms of list f, right? Uh, so first we pattern, it's the same pattern that we followed for sum. We first pattern match on the input. If it's nil f, then we apply alg, by the way, the, the, I've called the function uh, fb to be uh, alg, short for algebra. Uh, it's, I've, I don't have a good idea why it's called that, but uh, it's a pretty common term uh, and you'll encounter a lot when, when, uh, when, when using this stuff, so uh, it's good to know. Uh, so. So the first thing I, I do is I pattern match on the fix of list f, and uh, if it's a nil f, I apply algebra to the nil f. If it's a cons f, I apply algebra to the cons of h and the result of recursing on the tail. Right, so um, let's uh, kind of break this up a little bit. Uh, instead of pattern matching on the fix, I'm just going to call this unfix method, where unfix is just calling the unfix um, uh, property on, 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 on any fix. Uh, so instead of pattern matching on the fix, I'm going to call unfix first, and then do this pattern matching on the list f, and then finally call algebra at the end. So this is the same as what we saw earlier. Now, the part of this that is kind of data structure specific is that middle part, right? This part. Uh, what can we do? Like, what, is, that, is that an essence here that we can extract uh, and place as a constraint on f so that we can implement this for any f? Right? It turns out that that um, abstraction is a uh, functor, right? Uh, so uh, fmap uh, for a list, uh, by the way, how many of you are familiar with functors? Okay, at least amount of you. It's, it's basically a, a structure that takes uh, some function from A to B, B and returns a, a function from FA to FB. So in the case of list F, it's a function that takes an A to B and returns a function from list F of A to list F of B. Uh, uh, importantly here, uh, this is not a functor for list, right? A functor for list would have applied f on the head. This functor is applying f on the tail, right? 
Um, so you can see how this is similar to the, uh, the, the middle section of our fold implementation that we saw earlier. The only difference is that the F value here is fold of algebra, right? Uh, so, so we can implement uh, this section uh, as just F map of fold of algebra. And now finally we have an implementation of fold that is entirely abstract in F, right? So if F is a functor, uh, given an algebra from FB to B, I can return a function that collapses this recursive data structure fix F into a B. And all I have to do is first run fix it, F map fold algebra it, and then algebra. Cool. <laughs> it's cool to me. Um, cool, let's, let's look at some examples of algebras, right? Uh, we, we've seen some examples of what F looks like, list F and tree F. These are called uh, pattern functors, by the way, uh, another uh, term that will come up, come up quite often. Um, so an algebra looks uh, like a, a function that you're, you're kind of defining what you want to do at a single stage of the recursion, right? Uh, so you're saying that if it's nil f, return zero. If it's cons f, unlike cons, you don't get uh, the head and the tail at a particular position. You get the head and the result of having summed the tail at a particular position, right? So you've, you've kind of isolated the, you, you end up with the same goal of isolating the recursion here. You're, you're, you're defining uh, the sum algebra irrespective of, um, with, without using any recursion. And you apply uh, fold to the sum algebra, and you get back a sum method that takes a recursive list and reduces it into an integer. Cool. Um, we can do the same thing for tree using the exact same fold method, now that it's kind of data structure and generic, right? So you write this algebra that uh, pattern matches on leaf f and branch f, and all it does is return a in the case of leaf and adds up l and r in the case of branch. Um, also, now we can compose algebras. Right, uh, now that we've extracted uh, like kind of the essence of finding the sum and the length uh, from the mechanism that kind of traverses the data structure and applies that algebra, uh, we can compose them by, uh, by just like taking the input of the algebra and applying it to both sum algebra and length algebra, and we end up uh, with a function that computes both sum and length uh, of, 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 of a recursive list. Cool. Um, so let's uh, move on to some other kinds of uh, uh, recursion schemes. Um, let's start with the anamorphism. Ana from uh, the Greek meaning to build. Um, this is a recursion scheme that you want to be using when you're implementing an algorithm that builds a recursive data structure. Uh, but for now, let's just define it as the opposite of a catamorphism, right? So literally, we're going to take the definition of catamorphism, that abstract definition of the catamorphism that we come up with, and invert everything about it and see what we come up with. Um, yeah. uh, so this is our definition of fold. Right? I'm going to rename fold to unfold. Uh, algebra to coalgebra, and, and I'm going to flip the function. So co algebra is a function from FB to B. Coalgebra is a function from B to FB. Right? And this will return a function from B to fix F, instead of fix F to B. And you can see right here what, what, we are, what, what this does. Right? So it, it's taking some value B and constructing a recursive data structure. Fix F means some sort of recursive data structure. Right? Uh, the implementation of this is also just kind of flipping it, right? The order of the methods gets changed and it gets replaced with their opposites. Uh, so algebra becomes the first thing that you call and becomes coalgebra. Uh, unfix goes to the end and becomes fix. Uh, F map of fold of algebra becomes F map of unfold of coalgebra. And this compiles uh, and probably does something. We don't know what yet. We've just like flipped everything, right? Uh, so let's, let's actually try applying it uh, to, 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 a, to, to a real uh, coalgebra. Uh, so let's, uh, we re looking back at sum, uh, we define an algebra this way. Uh, we're going to try and call unfold on some sort of reverse of this algebra. So we're going to have to like flip, flip the algebra as well. Uh, so the first case, like nil f to zero is kind of straightforward. You just make it zero to nil f, right? The second case where we are taking uh, this tuple of two things, h and sum so far, and adding them up, the reverse would be something like destructuring an integer into two two constituent integers, right? Like if I took three and made it into two and one, uh, there are many ways you can do this. Let's just pick an arbitrary way where I just subtract one. I, I break up n into, I break up i into one and i minus one. Uh, so what happens if I plug this coalgebra into unfold, right? So if it's zero, return nil f. If it's a sum of h and sum so far, return h and sum so far. Um, you end up with uh, something like this. So given uh, in an initial value an integer, you end up with a recursive data structure that sums up to that integer, which is kind of cool. Uh, you, you 
have this function that this, this function sum that takes a list and reduces it to a to a sum, and this function cosum that takes a sum and explodes it into a list that has the property that it sums to that value. Uh, that's not a terribly useful uh, <laughs> anamorphism. <laughs> I, I realize I just want to to kind of ex show the relationships between uh, these um, these recursion schemes uh, through through the sum method. Uh, but uh, a more useful one would be uh, range, right? Uh, we do this quite often. We say like one to ten or two list or something like that. Uh, if we implemented using a direct recursion, it would look like this. So your pattern match and start. If you reach the end already, you're done. Uh, if not, you add the current value onto the result of generating a range with n plus one. If you implemented this with unfold, it would look very similar. Uh, so instead of a nil, we would be running a nil f. And instead of calling range explicitly, we would just be providing, returning a cons f where we provide the next value of n. So cons f takes two, two, uh, two values. The first one is the value that's kind of emitted in this uh, iteration, and n plus one is a seed for the next iteration. Uh, so you, you uh, un, uh, I think stream in, Scala, in the Scala channel library has an unfold method that, uh, that, that basically operates like this. Um, okay, more recursion schemes. Uh, paramorphism, uh, para meaning beside. Uh, it's like a catamorphism uh, that adds some structure to the algebra. Uh, so let's define it in uh, using the same kind of data structure agnostic um, way that we did with uh, fold, right? So if a fold looks like this, where the algebra is something that takes an f of b to a b, a, a, the algebra for a paramorphism takes both an f of b and a fix f, right? So at each stage um, that, the, that, that the algebra is being applied, you have access both to uh, the, 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 the value at that, at that node as well, the value computed so far to that node, as well as the structure that produced that value. So B and fix F are related uh, in that B uh, is the result of collapsing fix F. Uh, so what can we do? Again, let's just try applying para to the sum algebra and see like what, what do we get when, when, when we try doing this. Uh, Again, not so much, really. Uh, so the difference is that in, in the concept case here, instead of just getting the sum so far, we also get the list so far. So that list so far, when summed up, returns sum so far, which useful for a lot of things, but uh, here, I mean, I think a, a kind of straightforward use might be to trace through a catamorphism, right? So you have a recursive data structure that you're going down, and you want to see like what the output at each stage was. It, you, could, you could do it this way. Although, I mean, don't ever print line something in the middle of your algorithm. Do it in, uh, in, in a way that's somewhat more structured, like this, right? So given an algebra f of b to b, I can reduce it to a trace of that, that, that algebra. So I, if, I, if I defined a, uh, the, an algebra for paramorphism that took a uh, f of trace and fix f to a trace and applied para to it, I could get a function that recurs through a data structure and told me what the value it computed at each level was. Which is really cool. I've defined this completely independent of data types because I've, 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 been, I've been using these definitions of, of, of para that are data type independent. I, I, can, I can use this for any recursive data structure. Uh, I haven't included the uh, definition of uh, T-algebra here. Uh, it gets long, can't fit into a single slide, uh, but I'm happy to show it to you after the talk. Um, Cool. Uh, the penultimate one that we'll be covering is uh, apomorphism, uh, which is uh, the dual of a paramorphism. Um, so let's just see like the, the, the kind of grid of uh, recursion schemes we talked about so far, right? So unfold is kind of the opposite of fold, and para is kind of fold with some additional structure. So apo is kind of like unfold with some additional structure. And the structure here being instead of taking an f of b and a fix f, an apomorphism returns an f of a b or a fix f. What that means is that in the, the, the co-algebra of the apomorphism, instead of just generating a value every single time, uh, can decide to terminate the recursion and say, here's your final fix f, right? So instead of just emitting a new b to be added uh, on, on, onto, the, um, uh, onto, onto the data structure they're generating, uh, you can just stop at some point and say, here's a write of fix f, 
and we're done. Let's apply it to COSUM again, right? Uh, so here we were generating uh, va values uh, using this uh, plus deconstructor. Assume for some random reason, when we encountered two, I just want to return a list of two and call it a day. Um, so that, that's what I'm doing in that second case there. If n is equal to two, I'm just saying, don't do any more, that's the end of the list, just emit two right now and stop, right? Don't, don't keep going. Um, a more useful example of this would be uh, insert, a function which I think we also saw in the previous talk, uh, a, a function that takes a number and inserts it in the right position in an ordered list. So given the number four and list one, two, three, five, we insert it at the uh, fourth position. Uh, the interesting thing about this um, function is that if we were traversing this list, for, list from right to left, we only have to traverse two places to find out what the final result is, right? So once we've hit three, we know where four needs to go, and we're done. Uh, so this is a place that we could use apomorphisms. And implementation of this looks like this. So it's again the second case that's, that's uh, sort of interesting. Uh, so once um, the head of the list gets greater than the element you're trying to insert, which is i, uh, just return i and the list that you, that, and whatever the rest of the list is. Cool. Um, the uh, last uh, recursion scheme we're going to cover is uh, hylomorphisms, uh, which are somewhat simpler in that they're just like a combination of a, um, uh, a anamorphism and a catamorphism. Uh, oh, it should be unfold and fold. Uh, but it, all it does is it uh, takes the initial value of A, produces a recursive data structure fix of F, and then the catamorphism using the algebra FB to B consumes that recursive data structure and produces a single value B. So you're kind of generating this, uh, this intermediate data structure and then consuming it, right? A good example of this is merge sort, right? You can think of this as taking a list and exploding it into a tree of sublists and then consuming that tree of sublists and putting them in the right order, right? Like taking two branches and then like squishing them together in the right order. So if you defined uh, a co-algebra that's from list to tree f of list and a merge algebra that's from tree f of list to list, we could put them together using a hylomorphism and you got merge sort. Um, Okay, uh, so yeah, that's, that's all I have. Uh, uh, this, um, these are some of the, a lo lot of the stuff, none of this stuff is really new. Uh, a lot of the stuff is uh, explicated a lot in kind of Haskell blog posts. If there's anything that I've added here, it's, it's mostly just kind of making it accessible to a Scala audience. But uh, please go in and read these. They're just much more expansive and uh, detailed than I could get into uh, here. And I'd like to mention uh, there's a great library for doing this stuff uh, called Metroshka. Uh, you can see it at that link. Um, if, uh, if any of you are interested, I can, I can walk you through some of the examples that I showed here implemented in terms of Metroshka uh, later on. So, thank you.